My name is Mitchell Tetherford, and I'm a playwright. Tonight, I'll be reading an uh, original work, Act One of an original work, Death of a Salesman, by Mitchell Tetherford. Act One. A melody is heard played upon a flute. It is a, it's small and fine, telling of grass and green and trees and the horizon. The curtain rises. Before us is the salesman's house. We are unsure of towering angular shapes behind it, surrounding it on all sides. Only the blue light of the sky falls upon the house in four stage. The surrounding area shows an angry glow on the, of orange. As more light appears, we see a solid vault of apartment houses around the small, fragile, seeming home. An air of the dream clings to the place, a dream rising out of reality. The kitchen at center seems actual enough, for there is a kitchen table with three chairs and a refrigerator but no other fixtures are seen. At the back of the kitchen, there is a draped entrance which leads to, to the living room. To the right of the kitchen, on a level raised two feet, is a bedroom furnished only with brass, bedstead, and a straight chair. On a shelf over a bed, the bed, a silver athletic trophy stands. A window opens up on the apartment house at the side. Behind the kitchen on a level raised six and a half feet is the boys bedroom at present barely visible. Two beds are dimly seen and at the back of the room a dormer window. This bedroom is above the unseen living room. At the left a stairway curves up uh. to it from the kitchen. The entire setting is wholly or, in some places, partially transparent. The roof line of the house is one-dimensional. Under and over it, we see uh, the apartment buildings. Before the house lies an apron, curving beyond the fourth stage into the orchestra. This forward area serves as a backyard, as well as a locale of all Willie's imaginings of his city scenes. Whenever the action is in the present, the actors Observe the imaginary wall lines entering the house only through its door at the left. But in the scenes of the past, these boundaries are broken, and characters enter or leave a room by stepping through a wall on the fourth stage. From the right, Willie Loman, the salesman, enters carrying two large sample cases. The flute plays on. He hears but is not aware of it. He is past 60 years of age, dressed quietly, even as he crosses the stage to the doorway of the house. His exhaustion is apparent. He unlocks the door, comes into the kitchen, and thankfully lets his burden down. Feeling the soreness of his palms, a word sigh escapes his lips. It might be, oh boy, oh boy. He closes the door, then carries his cases out into the living room through the draped kitchen doorway. Linda, his wife, has stirred in her bed at the right. She gets out and puts on a robe, listening, most often jovial. She has developed an iron repression of her exceptions to Willie's behavior. She is more than loves him. She admires him, as though his mercurial nature his temper, his massive dreams, and little cruelties served her only as sharp reminders of the turbulent longings within him, longings which she shares but lacks the temperament to utter and follow to their end. Linda, hearing Willie outside the bedroom, calls with some trepidation. Willie? 
It's all right. I came back. Why? What happened? Slight pause. Did something happen, Willie? No, nothing happened. You didn't smash the car, did you? Willie with casual irritation. I said nothing happened. Didn't you hear me? Don't you feel well? I'm tired to death. The fluid has faded away. He sits to the bedside here, a little numb. I couldn't make it. I just couldn't make it with it. Linda very carefully, delicately. Where were you all day? You look terrible. We got as far as a little above Yonkers. I stopped for a cup of coffee. Maybe it was the coffee. What? I suddenly couldn't drive anymore. The car kept going off onto the shoulder, you know? Linda helpfully. Oh, maybe it was the steering again. I don't think Angela knows the Studebaker. No, it's me, it's me. Suddenly I realize I'm going 60 miles an hour and I don't remember the last five minutes. I'm, I can't seem to keep my mind to it. Maybe it's your glasses. You never went for your new glasses. No, I, I see everything. I came back 10 miles an hour. It took me nearly four hours from Yonkers. Well, You'll just have to take a rest. Willie, you can't continue this way. I just got back from Florida. But you didn't rest your mind. Your mind is overactive. And the mind is what counts, dear. I'll start out in the morning. Maybe I'll feel better in the morning. She is taking off his shoe. These goddamn art supports are killing me. Take an aspirin. Should I get you an aspirin? It'll soothe you. Willie with wonder. I was driving along, you understand? And I was fine. I was even observing the scenery. You can imagine me looking at the scenery on the road every week of my life. But it's so beautiful up there, Linda. The, the trees are so thick and the sun is warm. I opened the windshield and I just let the warm air bathe over me. Then, sudden, then all of a sudden, I'm going off the road. I'm telling you, I absolutely forgot I was driving. If I'd, if I'd have gone the other way over, over the white line, I might have killed somebody. So I went on again. Five minutes later, I'm dreaming again. And I nearly... presses his two fingers against his eyes. I have such thoughts. I have such strange thoughts. Willie, dear, talk to them again. There's no reason why you can't work in New York. They don't need me in New York. I'm the New England man. I'm vital in New England. But you're 60 years old. They can't expect you to keep traveling every week. I'll have to send a wire to Portland. I'm supposed to see Brown and Morrison tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock to show the line. God damn it. I could sell them. He starts putting on his jacket. Linda taking on his jacket from him. Why don't you go down to the place tomorrow and tell Howard you've simply got to work in New York? You're too accommodating, dear. If old man Wagner was alive, I'd be, a, I'd be in charge of New York now. That man was a prince. He was a masterful man. But that boy of his, that Howard, he don't appreciate. When I went to North for the first time, the Wagner Company didn't know where New England was. Why don't you tell those things to Howard, dear? I will. I definitely will. Is there any cheese? I'll make you a sandwich. No, go to sleep. I'll take some milk. I'll be up right away. The boys in? They're sleeping. Happy took Biff on a date tonight. That's so. It was so nice to see them shaving together, one behind the other in the bathroom. 
going out together. You notice? The whole house smells of shaving lotion. Figure it out. Work a lifetime to pay off a house. You finally own it. There's nobody to live in it. Well, dear, life is casting off. It's always that way. No, no. Some people, some people accomplish something. Did Biff say anything after I went this morning? You shouldn't have criticized him, Willie, especially after he got off the train. You mustn't lose your temper, Willie. When the hell did I lose my temper? I simply asked him if, if, if he was making any money. Is that a criticism? But, dear... How could he make any money? Willie worried and angry. There's such an undercurrent in him. He became a moody man. Did he apologize when I left this morning? He was crestfallen, Willie. You know how he admires you. I think if he finds himself, then we'll both be happier, not fight anymore. How can he find himself on a farm? Is that a wife? A farmhand? In the beginning, when he was young, I thought, well, a young man, it's, it's good for him to tramp around, take a lot of different jobs. But it's more than 10 years now. He has, he has yet to make $35 a week. He's finding himself, Willie. Not finding yourself at the age of 34 is a disgrace. Shh. The trouble is he's lazy, goddammit. Willie, please. Biff is a lazy bum. They're sleeping. Get something to eat. Go on down. Why did he come home? I would like to know what brought him home. I don't know. I think he's still lost, Willie. I think he's very lost. Biff Loman is lost. In the greatest country in, a world, in the world, a young man with such personal attractiveness gets lost. And such a hard worker. There's one thing about Biff. He's not lazy. What happened? Willie with pity and resolve. I'll see him in the morning. I'll have a nice talk with him. I'll get him a job selling. He could be a big in no time. My God. Remember how they used to follow him around in high school? When he smiled at one of them, their faces lit up. When he walked down the street, he loses himself in reminiscence. Linda trying to bring him in out of out of it. Willie, dear, I've got a new American type of cheese today. It's whipped. Why do you get American when I like Swiss? I just thought you'd like a change. I don't want a change. I want Swiss cheese. Why am I always being contradicted? Linda with uh, covering the laugh. I thought it would be a surprise. Why don't you open a window in here, for God's sake? Linda with infinite patience. They're all open, dear. The way they boxed us in here, bricks and windows, windows and bricks, we should have bought the land next door. The street is lined with cars. There's not a breath of fresh air in the neighborhood. The grass don't grow anymore. You can't raise a carrot in the backyard. They should have had a law against apartment houses. Remember those two beautiful elm trees out there when I and Biff hung the swing between them? Yeah, like being a million miles from the city. They should have arrested the builder for cutting those down. They massacred the neighborhood. More and more I think of those days, Linda. This time of year was lilac and wisteria. And then peonies would come out and the daffodils. What fragrance in this room? 
Well, after all, people had to move somewhere. No, there's more people now. I don't think there's more people. I think there's more people. That's what's ruining this country. Population is getting out of control. The competition is maddening. Smell the stink from the apartment house. Add another one on the other side. How can they whip cheese? On William's last line, Biff and Happy raised themselves up in their beds, listening. Go down, try it. Willie turning to Linda guiltily. You're not worried about you, are you, sweetheart? What's the matter? Listen. You've got too much on the ball to worry about. You're my foundation and my support, Linda. Just try and relax, dear. You make mountains out of molehills. I won't fight with him anymore. If he wants to go back to Texas, let him go. He'll find his way. Sure. Certain men just don't need to get started till just don't get started till later in life. Like Thomas Edison, I think. Or B.F. Goodrich. One of them was deaf. He starts for the bedroom doorway. I'll put my money. I'll put my money on Biff. And Willie. It's warm Sunday. We'll drive in the country. We'll open the windshields. We'll take lunch. No. Windshields don't open on your phones. But you opened it today. Me? I didn't. Now isn't that peculiar? Isn't that remarkable? He breaks off in amazement and fright as the flute is heard dissonant. What, darling? It's the most remarkable thing. What, dear? I was thinking of the Chevy. 1928. I had that red Chevy. It had plenty. I could have sworn I was driving that Chevy today. Well, that's nothing. Something must have reminded you. Remarkable. Remember those days? The way Biff used to simonize the car, the dealer refused to believe there was 80,000 miles on it. He shakes his head. Huh. To Linda, close your eyes. I'll be right up. He walks out of the bedroom, happy to Biff. Jesus, maybe he smashed up the car again. Linda, calling after Willie. Be careful on the stairs, dear. The cheese is on the middle shelf. She turns, goes over to the bed, takes his jacket, and goes out of the bedroom. Light has risen on the boys' room. Unseen, Willie is heard talking to himself. 80,000 miles. And a little laugh. Biff gets out of bed, comes down to stage a bit, and stands attentively. Biff is two years older than his brother, Happy. Well built, but in these days bears a worn air and seems less self-assured. He has succeeded less, and his dreams are stronger and less acceptable than Happy's. Happy is tall, powerfully made. Sexuality is like a vis visible color on him, or a scent that many women have discovered. He, like his brother, is lost, but in a different way. For he has never allowed himself to turned its face toward defeat and is thus more confused and hard skinned although seemingly more content. Happy getting out of bed. He's going to get his license taken away if he keeps that up. You get nervous about him, you know all that? His eyes are going. You know, I've driven him up. He's all right. Just doesn't keep his mind on it. Drove into the city with him last week. He stops at a green light and then turns red and goes. Maybe he's colorblind. Pop? Why? He's got the finest eye color in the business. You know what? You know that. I'm going to sleep. You're not so sour on Dad, are you, Biff? 
He's all right, I guess. Willie underneath them in the living room. Yes, sir. 80,000 miles. 82,000. You smoking? Uh. Happy holding pack out a pack of cigarettes. One woman? Fifth taking cigarettes. I can never sleep when I smell it. Willie. What a seminizing job, huh? Happy with deep sentiment. Funny, Biff, you know? Am I sleeping in here again? The old beds? He pats his bed affectionately. All the talk that we went across those two beds, huh? Our whole lives. Yeah. A lot of dreams and plans. Happy with deep man masculine laugh. About 500 women would like to know what was said in this room. They share some laugh. Remember that big Betsy something? What the hell was her name? Over on Bushwick Avenue? With the collie dog? That's the one. I got you in there, remember? Yeah, it was my first time, I think. Boy, there was a pig. They laugh almost crudely. You taught me everything I know about women. Don't forget that. I bet you forgot how bashful you used to be. Especially with the girls. Oh, I still am, Biff. Oh, go on. I just control it, that's all. I think I got a little less bashful and you got more so. What happened, Biff? Where's the old humor? The old confidence? He shakes. Biff's knee, Biff gets up and moves restlessly about the room. What's the matter? Why does Dad dock me all the time? Why does Dad mock me all the time? He's not mocking you, huh? He, uh, everything I say, there's a twist of mockery on his face. I can't get near him. He just wants you to make good, that's all. I wanted to talk to you about Dad for a long time, Biff. Something's happening to him. He, he talks to himself. I know I said this morning. But he always mumbled. But not so noticeable. He got so embarrassing, I sent him to Florida. You know something? Most of the time he's talking to you. What's he say about me? I can't make it out. What's he say about me? The fact that you're not settled, that you're uh, still kind of up in the air. There's one or two other things to press him happy. What do you mean? Never mind. Just don't lay it all on me. But I think if you got started, I mean, there's is there any future out there for you? I tell you that. I don't know if. The future is. I don't, I don't know. I'm supposed to want. What do you mean? Well, I spent six or seven years in high school trying to work myself up. Shipping clerk, salesman, business of one kind or another. And it's a measly manner of existence. To get on that subway on the hot mornings in summer. Devote your whole life to keeping stock. Making phone calls or selling or buying. Suffer 50 weeks of the year for the sake of a two-week vacation, when all you really desire is to be outdoors, shirt off, always to get ahead, next fellow, still, that's how you build a future. Well, you really enjoy it on the farm? You content out there? Biff with rising agitation. Yeah, if I had 20 or 30 different kinds of jobs since I left home before the war, it always turns out the same. I just realized it lately. In Nebraska, when I herded cattle, in the Dakotas, in Arizona, and now in Texas, that's why I came home now, I guess. Because I, I realized it. This farm I work on, it's spring there now, see? They've got about 15 new colts. There's nothing more inspiring 
more beautiful than the sight of a mare and new colt. It's cool there now, see? Texas is cool now. It's spring. Whenever spring comes to where I am, I suddenly get the feeling, my God, I'm not getting anywhere. What the hell am I doing? Playing around with horses? $28 a week? I'm 34 years old. I ought to be making up my future. That's when I come home running. Now, get here, I don't know what to do with myself. I've always made a point of not wasting my life, and every time I come back here, I know that all I've done is to waste my life. You're a poet. You know that, Biff. You're an idealist. No, mixed up, very bad. Maybe I ought to get married. Maybe I ought to get stuck into something. Maybe that's my trouble. I'm like a boy. I'm not married. I'm not in business. I just, I'm like a boy. You content, Hap? You're a success, aren't you? You content? Hell no! Why? You're making money, aren't you? Heavy movement about with energy expressiveness. All I can do now is wait on the wait for the merchandise manager to die. I'm supposed to be get, I'm, not, I'm, I'm supposed to get to be merchandise manager. He's a good friend of mine. He just built a terrific estate on Long Island. He lived there about two months and sold it. Now he's building another one. Can't enjoy it it's, once it's finished. I know that's just what I would do. I don't know what the hell I'm working for. Sometimes I sit in my apartment all alone. I think of the rent I'm paying. It's crazy. But then, it's what I always wanted. My own apartment, a car, plenty of women. But still, God damn it, I'm lonely. Biff with enthusiasm. Listen, why don't you come out west with me? You and I, huh? Sure. We could buy a ranch, raise cattle, use our muscles. Man, built like we are, should be working out in the open. The Lonin Brothers, eh? Sure. We could be known all over the country. We could be known all over the counties. That's what I dream about, Biff. Sometimes I want to just rip up my clothes off in the middle of the store and outbox that goddamn merchandise manager. I mean, I can outbox, outrun, and outlift anybody in that store. I have to take orders from those common, petty sons of bitches until I can't stand it anymore. I'm telling you, kid, if you were with me, I'd be happy out there. See, Biff, everybody around me is so false. I'm constantly lowering my ideals. Baby, together we stand up for one another. We have someone to trust. If I were around you, yeah, the trouble is we weren't brought up to grub for money. I know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. Uh. Neither can I. Then let's go. The only thing is, what can you make out there? Look at your friend. Builds an estate, then he has the peace of mind to live in it. Yeah, but when he walks into the store, the waves part in front of him. That's 52000 a year coming through the revolving door. I got more in my pinky finger than he's got in his head. Yeah, what you just said. I gotta show some of these pompous, self important executives over there that half moment can make the grade. I won't walk in the store the way he walks in. And I'll go with you, Biff. We'll be together yet, I swear. Take those two we had tonight. Weren't they gorgeous creatures? Yeah, yeah. Most gorgeous I've had in years. I get that any time I want, Biff. Whenever I feel disgusted, the only trouble is, it gets like bowling or something. You just keep knocking them over, it doesn't mean anything. 
still run around a lot? Nah. I'd like to find a girl. Steady. Somebody with substance. That's what I long for. Go on. You'd never come home. I would. Somebody with character? With resistance? Like mom, you know? You gonna call me a bastard when I tell you this? That girl Charlotte I was with tonight is engaged to be married in five weeks. He tries on his new hat. No kidding? Sure, the guy's in line for vice presidency of the store. I don't know what gets into me. Maybe I just have an overdeveloped sense of competition or something. But I went and ruined her. And furthermore, I can't get rid of her. And he's the third executive I've done that to. Isn't that crummy characteristic? And to top it all off, I go to their weddings. Dignantly, but laughing. Like, I'm not supposed to take bribes. Manufacturers offer me a $100 bill now. And then to throw an order their way. Wait. You know how honest I am? I mean, it's like this girl, see? I hate myself for it. Because I don't want the girl and still. I take it. And I love it. Let's go to sleep. I guess we didn't settle anything, eh? I just got one idea that I think I'm going to try. What's that? Remember Bill Oliver? Sure. Oliver is very big now. You want to work for him again? No. But when I quit, he, he said something to me. He put his arm on my shoulder and he said, Biff, if you ever need anything, come to me. I remember that. That sounds good. I think I'll go see him. If I could get ten thousand or even seven or eight thousand dollars, I could buy a beautiful ranch. I bet he'd back you. Cause he thought highly of you, Biff. I mean, they all do. You're well liked, Biff. That's why I say come back here. We both have the apartment. I'm telling you, Biff, any babe you want. No. For the ranch I could do the work I like. Still be some. I just wonder though. I wonder if Oliver still thinks I stole that card in the basketballs. Oh, he probably forgot that long ago. It's almost been 10 years. You're too sensitive. Anyway, he didn't really fire you. Well, I think he was going to. I think that's why I, was, I, I quit. I was never sure whether he knew, knew it or not. I knew he thought the world of me, though. I was the only one he let lock up the place. Willie below. You gonna wash the engine, Biff? Happy. Shh. Biff looks at Happy, who's gazing down, listening. Willie is mumbling in the parlor. Did you hear that? They listen, Willie laughs warmly. Biff growing angry. Doesn't he know mom can hear that? Don't get your sweater dirty, Biff. A look of pain crosses Biff's face. Isn't that terrible? Don't leave again, will you? We'll find a job here. You gotta stick around. I don't know what to do about him. It's getting embarrassing. Willie. What a Simonizing job. Mom's hearing that. No kidding, Biff. You got a date? Wonderful. Gone to sleep. Talk to him in the morning, will you? Biff reluctantly getting into bed. With her in the house? Brother. Happy getting into bed. I wish you'd have a good talk with him. The light in their room begins to fade. Biff to himself in bed. That's selfish. Stupid. Shh. Sleep, Biff. Their light is out. Well, before they have finished speaking, Willie's farm is dimly seen. Below in the darkened kitchen, he opens the refrigerator, searches in there, he takes out a bottle of milk. The apartment houses are fading out. 
and the entire house and surroundings become covered with leaves. Music insinuates itself as the leaves appear. Really? Just want to be careful with those girls, Bip. That's all. Don't make any promises. No promises of any kind. Because a girl, you know, they always believe what you tell them. You're very young, Bip. You're too young to be taking girls serious, talking seriously to girls. Light rises on the kitchen. Willie taking, talking, shuts the refrigerator door and comes down the stage to the kitchen table. He pours milk into a glass. He is totally immersed in himself, smiling faintly. Too young entirely, Bip. You want to watch your schooling first. And when you're all set, there'll be plenty of girls for a boy like you. He smiles broadly at the kitchen door, the kitchen chair. That's so? Did the girls pay for you? Boy, you must really be making a hit. Willie is gradually addressing the physically a point off stage, speaking through the wall of the kitchen, and his voice has been rising in volume to that of a normal conversation. I've been wondering why you polish the car so careful. Ah! Don't leave the hubcaps, boys. Get the shemoy to the hubcaps. Happy! Use newspaper on the windows. It's the easiest thing. Show him how to do it, Biff. You see, Happy? Pat it up. Use it like a pad. That's it. That's it. Good work. You're doing all right, Happy. He pauses and nods in a preparation for a few seconds and then looks up for you. Biff, first thing we got to do when you get the time is clip that big branch over the house. Afraid it's going to fall in a storm and hit the roof. Tell you what, we get a rope and sling her around, and we climb up there with a couple of saws and take her down. As soon as you finish the car, boys, I want to see you. I got a surprise for you, boys. Biff, off stage. What do you got, Dad? No, you finish first. Never leave a job till you're finished. Remember that. Biff, up in Albany I saw a beautiful hammock. I think I'll buy it next trip. We'll hang it right, right between those, those elms. Wouldn't that be something? Just swinging there under those branches? Boy, that would be. Young Biff and young Happy appear and uh, from the direction Willie was addressing. Happy carries rags and a pail of water. Biff wearing a sweater with a block S carries a football. Biff pointing in the direction of the car off stage. How's that, Pop? Professional? Terrific, terrific job, boys. Good work. Biff. Where's the surprise, Pop? In the back seat of the car. Boy! What is it, Dad? Tell me. What'd you buy? Willie laughing custom. Never mind. Something I want you to have. What is it, Ab? It's a punching bag. Oh, Pop. I got Gene Tunney's signature on it. Gee. How do you know we wanted a punching bag? Well, it's the finest thing for timing. I'm losing weight, you notice, Pop? Jump rope is good, too. You see that new football I got? Where'd you get that new ball? The coach told me to practice my passing. That's so? He gave you the ball, huh? Well, I borrowed it from the locker room. I want you to return that. I told you you wouldn't like it. Well, I'm bringing it back. Sure, he's got to practice with a regulation ball, doesn't he? Coach will probably congratulate you on your 
Initiative. Oh, he keeps congratulating my initiative all the time, Pop. It's because he likes you. Somebody else took that ball, there'd be an uproar. So what's the report, boys? What's the report? Where'd you go this time, Dad? Gee, we were lonesome for you. Lonesome, huh? Missed you every minute. Don't say it. I'll tell you a secret, boys. Don't breathe it to a soul. Someday I'll have my own business. I'll never have to leave home anymore. Like Uncle Charlie, huh? Bigger than Uncle Charlie because Charlie is not liked. He's liked, but he's not well liked. Where'd you go this time, Dad? Well, I got on the road and I went north to Providence. Met the mayor. The mayor of Providence? He was sitting in the hotel lobby. What'd he say? He said, morning. I said, you got a fine city here, Mayor. mayor. And he had coffee with me. Then I went to Waterbury. Waterbury is a fine city, big clock city. The famous Waterbury clock sold a nice bill there. Then Boston. Boston is a cradle of revolution, a fine city. A couple of other towns in Mass. Not Portland, Bangor, straight home. Gee, I'd love to go with you sometime, Dad. Soon as summer comes. Promise? You and Hap and I. And I'll show you all the towns. Merrick is full of beautiful towns and fine, upstanding people. And they know me, boys. They know me up and down New England, the finest people. When I bring you fellows up there, it'll be open sesame for all of us. Because one thing, boys, I have friends. I can park my car in any street in New England. The cops protect it like I'm their own. This summer, huh? Fit and happy together. Yeah, you bet. We'll take our bathing suits. We'll carry your bags, Pop. Oh, won't that be something? Me coming into Boston stores with you boys carrying my bags. What a sensation. Biff is prancing around, practicing, passing the ball. You nervous, Biff, about the game? Not if you're going to be there. What do they say about you in school? Now that they made you a captain. There's a crowd of girls behind them every, every time the classes change. The Saturday, Pop. The Saturday, just for you. For a breakthrough for a touchdown. You're supposed to pass. I'm taking one play for Pop. You watch me, Pop. When I take off my helmet, that means I'm breaking out. And you watch me crash through the line. Willie kisses Biff. Whoa, wait till I tell this in Boston. Bernard enters in Knickers. He is younger than Biff. Ernest, the lawyer, loyal, a worried boy. Biff, where are you? You're, su you're supposed to study with me today. Hey, look at Bernard. What are you looking so uh, anemic about, Bernard? He's got to study, Uncle Willie. He's got Regents next week. Let's box, Bernard. Biff. Listen, Biff. I heard Mr. Birnbaum say that if you don't start studying math, he's going to flunk you. You won't graduate. I heard him. You better study with him, Biff. Go ahead now. I heard him. Oh, Pop. You didn't see my sneakers. Hey, that's a beautiful job of printing. Just because he printed University of Virginia on his sneakers doesn't mean that you've got to graduate him, Uncle Willie. What are you talking about? Scholarships to three universities are going to flunk him? And I heard Mr. Birnbaum say... Don't be a pest, Bernard. What an anemic. 
Okay, I'm, I'm waiting for you in my house, Biff. Bernard is, is not well-liked, is he? He's light. He's, he's not well-liked. That's right, Pop. It's just what I mean. Bernard can't get the best marks in school, you understand? Bernard can get the best marks in school, you understand? But when he gets out of the business floor, world, you understand? You're going to be five times ahead of him. So I think, almighty God, you're both but built like Adonis's. Because the man who makes an appearance in the business world, the man who creates personal interest, is the man who gets ahead. Uh, be liked, and you will never want. You take me, for instance. I never have to wait in line to see a buyer. Willie Loman is here. That's all they have to know. I go right through. Did you knock him dead, Pop? Knocked him cold in Providence, slaughtered him in Boston. I'm losing weight, you notice, Pop? Linda enters Ed and Gold, a ribbon in her hair, carrying a basket of washing. Hello, dear. Sweetheart. How the Chevy run? Chevrolet, Linda, is the greatest car ever built. Since when do you let, let your mother carry wash up the stairs? Grab hold there, boy. Where to, Mom? Hang them up on the line. And you, and you better go down to your friends, Biff. The cellar is full of boys. They don't know what to do with themselves. Ah. When Pop comes home, they can wait. Better go down and tell them what to do, Biff. I think I'll have them sweep out the furnace. Good work, Biff. Biff goes through the wall line of the kitchen, the doorway at the back. And calls down. Fellas, everybody sweep out the furnace. I'll be right down. Voices. All right, okay, Biff. George and Sam and Frank, come out back. We're hanging up the wash. Come on, App, on the double. The way they obey him. Well, that's training. We're training. I'm telling you, I was selling thousands and thousands, but I had to come home. Oh, the whole block will be at that game. Did you sell anything? I did 500 gross in Providence and 700 gross in Boston. No. Wait a minute. I've got a pencil. She pulls the pencil out and paper out of her apron pocket. That makes your commission 200, my God, $212. Well, I didn't figure it yet, but. How much did you do? Well, I, I did about 180 gross in Providence. Well, no, it came to roughly 200 gross on the whole trip. 200 gross, that's? Trouble was that three of the stores were half closed for inventory in Boston. Otherwise, I would have broke rec records. Well, it makes seventy dollars and some pennies. That's very good. What do we owe? Well, on the first, there's sixteen dollars on the refrigerator. Why sixteen? Well, the fan felt broke. It was dollar eighty. But it's brand new. Well, the man said that's the way it is. Till they work themselves in, you know. They move through the wall line into the kitchen. I hope we didn't get stuck on that machine. They got the biggest ads of any kind, any of them. I know, it's a fine machine. What else? Well, there's 96 for the washing machine, and for the vacuum cleaner, there's three and a half due to the 15, due on the 15th. Then the roof, you've got $21 remaining. Don't leak, does it? No, they did a wonderful job. Did you owe Frank for the carburetor? I'm not going to pay that man. That goddamn Chevrolet, they ought to 
prohibit the manufacture of that car. Well, you own three and a half. And odds and ends. Comes to around $120 by the 15th. $120, my God! Business don't pick up. I don't know what I'm going to do. Well, next week you'll do better. Well, I'll knock them dead next week. I'll go to Hartford. I'm very well liked in Hartford. You know, the trouble is, Linda, people don't seem to take me. They move on to the fourth stage. They move on to the fourth stage. Oh, don't be foolish. I know it when I walk in. They seem to laugh at me. Why? Why would they laugh at you? Don't talk that way, Willie. Willie moves to the front, to the edge of the stage. Linda goes into the kitchen and starts to darn stockings. I don't know the reason for it. They just pass me by. Not noticed. But you're doing wonderful, dear. You're making seventy to a hundred dollars a week. But I gotta be at it 10, 12 hours a day. Other men, I don't know, they do it easier. I don't know why. I, I can't stop myself. I talk too much. Man ought to come in a few words. Come in with a few words. One thing about Charlie, he's a man of a few words, and they respect him. You don't talk too much. You're just like it. Well, I figure, what the hell? Life is short. A couple of jokes. I joke too much. Why? You're, I'm fat. I'm very foolish to look at, Linda. I didn't tell you, but Christmas time, I, I happen to be calling on F.H. Stewart's. The salesman, I know. As I was going in to see the buyer, I heard him say something about Walvis. And I, I cracked him right across the face. Won't take that. I simply will not take that. But they do laugh at me. I know that. I gotta overcome it. I know I gotta overcome it. I'm not dressing to advantage, maybe. Willie, darling, you're the handsomest man in the world. Oh, no, Linda. To me, you are the handsomest. From the darkness is heard the laughter of a woman. Willie doesn't turn to it, but he continues to see Linda's face. And the boys, Willie, few men are idolized by their children the way you are. Music is heard as behind the scrim to the left of the house. The woman dimly seen is dressing. You're the best there is, Linda. You're a pal, you know that? On the road, on the road, I want to grab you sometimes and just kiss the life out of you. The laughter is now loud and he moves into a brightening area at the left where the woman has come from behind the scrim and is standing putting on her hat looking into a mirror and laughing because I get so lonely especially when business is bad there's nobody to talk to I get the feeling like I'll never sell anything again and I won't make a living for you or a business a business for the boys he talks through the woman's exciting laughter the woman prints at the mirror so much I want to make for you. The woman. Me? You didn't make me one? I picked you. Willie, please. You picked me? The woman who is quite proper looking, Willie's age. I did. I've been sitting at the desk watching all the salesmen go by, day in and day out. But you've got a sense of humor. We do have such a good time together, don't we? Sure, sure. Why do you have to go now? It's too hot. No! Come on in, he pulls her. My sisters will be scandalized. When will you be back? Oh, two weeks about. Will you come up again? Sure thing. You do make me laugh. It's good for me. She squeezes his arm and kisses him. 
that took care of wonder for me. You pick me up. Sure. Because you're so sweet and such a kid. Well, I'll see you next time I'm in Boston. I'll put you right through to the bottoms. Willie slapping her bottom. Right. Well, bottoms up. The woman slapped him gently and laughed. You just kill me, Willie. He suddenly grabs her and kisses her roughly. You kill me. And thanks for the stockings. I love a lot of stockings. Well, good night. Good night. Keep your pores open. Oh, Willie. The woman bursts out laughing, and when his laughter blends in, the woman disappears into the dark and out of the area. At the kitchen table, Brighton's Linda is sitting when she was at the kitchen table, but now is mending a pair of her silk stockings. You are, Willie, the handsomest man. I've got no reason to feel that. Willie coming out of the woman's dimming area and going over to Linda. I'll make it up to you. Linda, I'll... There's nothing to make up, dear. You're doing fine. Better than... What's that? Just mending my stockings. It's, they're so expensive. I won't have you mending stockings in this house. Now throw them out. Linda puts the stockings in her pocket. Bernard entering on the run. Where is he? If he doesn't study... Willie moved into the fourth stage with great agitation. You'll give him the answers. I do, but I can't on a, on a regents. That's a state exam. They're liable to arrest me. Where is he? I'll whip him. I'll whip him. And he'd better get back that football, Willie. It's not nice. Biff, where is he? Why is he taking everything? He's too rough with the girls, Willie. All the mothers are afraid of him. I'll whip him. He's driving a car without a license. The woman's laugh is heard. Shut up! All the mothers... Shut up! Bernard backing quietly away and out. Mr. Birnbaum says he'll stuck up. He's stuck up. Get out of here! If he doesn't buckle down, he'll flunk mad. He's right, Willie. You've got to... Willie exploding in. There's nothing the matter with him. You want him to be like a worm, like Bernard? He's got spirit, personality. As he speaks, Linda, almost in tears, exits into the living room. Willie is alone in the kitchen, wilting and staring. The leaves are gone. It is night again, and the apartment houses look down from behind. Willie. Loaded with him. Loaded. What is he stealing? He's giving it back, isn't he? Why is he stealing? What did I tell him? I never in my life told him anything but decent thing. Happy in pajamas has come down the stairs. Willie suddenly becomes aware of Happy's presence. Let's go now. Come on. Willie's sitting at the kitchen table. Huh? Why did she have to wax the floors herself? Every time she waxes these floors, she keels over. She knows that. Shh. Take it easy. I brought you back tonight. I got an awful scare. Nearly hit a kid in the office. God. Why didn't I go to Alaska with my brother Ben at that time? Ben! That man was a genius. That man was a success incarnate. What a mistake. He begged me to go. Well, there's no use in... You guys! There was a man started with clothes on his back and ended up with diamond mines. Boy, someday I'd like to know how he did it. What's the mystery? The man knew what he wanted. And he went out and got it. 
walked into a jungle and comes out at the age of 21 and he's rich. The world is an oyster. But you don't crack it open on a mattress. Pop, I told you I'm going to retire you for life. You'll retire me for life on 70 goddamn dollars a week? And your women and your car and your apartment and you'll retire me for life? Christ's sake. I couldn't get past Yonkers today. Where are you guys? Where are you? The woods are burning. I can't drive a car. Charlie has appeared in the doorway. He was a large man, slow of speech, slow of tonic, removable. And all he says, despite what he says, there is pity and now trepidation. He has a robe over his divan, slippers on his feet. He enters the kitchen. Everything all right? Yeah, Charlie, everything's... Yeah, Charlie, everything's... What's the matter? I heard some noise. I thought something happened. Can't we do something about the walls? You sneeze in here, and my house hats blow off. Let's go to bed, Dad. Come on. Charlie signals to the happy to go. You go ahead. I'm not tired at the moment. Take it easy, huh? Kids. What are you doing up? Charlie's sitting down at the kitchen table opposite the room. Couldn't sleep. I had a heartburn. Well, you don't know how to eat. I eat with my mouth. No, you're ignorant. You gotta know how. You gotta know about vitamins and things like that. Come on. Let's shoot. Tire you out a little. All right. You got cards? Charlie taking his deck from his pocket. Yeah, I got them. Someplace. What is it with those vitamins? They build up your bones, chemistry. Yeah, but there's no burn bones in heartburn. What are you talking about? You know the first thing about it? Uh, don't get salty. Don't talk about something you don't know anything about. They are playing cars. What are you doing home? A little trouble with the car. Oh. I'd like to take a trip to California. Don't say. You want a job? I got a job. I told you that. What the hell are you offering me a job for? Don't get insulted. Don't insult me. I don't see no sense in it. You don't have to go on this way. I got a good job. What do you keep coming in here for? You want me to go? I can't understand it. He's going back to Texas again. What the hell is that? Let him go. I got nothing to give him, Charlie. I'm clean. I'm clean. He won't starve. None of them starve. Forget about it. And what have I got to remember? You take it too hard. The hell with it. When a deposit bottle is broken, you don't get your nickel back. That's easy enough for you to say. That's no, That ain't easy for me to say. Did you see the ceiling I put up? In the living room? Yeah. That's a piece of work. To put up a ceiling is a mystery to me. How do you do it? What's the difference? Well, talk about it. You gonna put up a ceiling? How could I put up a ceiling? What the hell are you bothering me for? You're insulted again. A man who ha can't handle tools is not a man. You're disgusting. Don't call me disgusting. Uncle Ben carrying a valise and umbrella, valise, valise and an umbrella, enters the four stage from around the right of the corner of the house. 
He is a stolid man in his 60s with a mustache and a Thorndike bear. He is utterly certain of his destiny. There is an aura of far places about him. He enters exactly as Willie speaks. Now I'm getting awfully tired, Ben. Ben's music is heard. Ben looks around at everything. Good. Keep playing. You'll sleep better. Do you call me Ben? Ben looks at his watch. That's funny. For a second there, you remind me of my brother Ben. I only have a few minutes. He strolls inspecting the place Willie and Charlie continue playing. You never heard from him again, huh? Since that time? Didn't Linda tell you? A couple of weeks ago, he got a letter from his wife in Africa. He died. That's so. Ben chuckling. So this is Brooklyn, huh? Maybe you're in for some of the fun. Nah. He had seven sons. There's just one opportunity I had with that man. I must make a train, William. There are seven, several properties I'm looking at in Alaska. Sure, sure. If I'd gone with him to Alaska at that time, everything would have been totally different. Go on. You froze up to death. Uh, you froze to death up there. What are you talking about? Opportunity is tremendous in Alaska, William. Surprised you're not up there. Sure. Tremendous. Huh? I was the only man I ever met who knew the answers. Ooh. How are you all? Willie taking a pot, smiling. Fine, fine. Pretty sharp tonight. Is mother living with you? No, she died a long time ago. Who? That's too bad. Fine specimen of a lady mother. Huh? I'd hope to see the old girl. Who died? Heard anything from father, have you? What do you mean, who died? What are you talking about? William, it's half past eight. Willie, as though to dispel his confusion, he angrily stops Charlie's hand. That's my bill. I put the ace. You don't know how to play the game. I'm not going to throw my money away on you. My ace, for God's sake. I'm through. I'm through. When did Mother die? Long ago. Since the beginning. You never knew how to play cards. Charlie picks up the cards and goes to the door. All right. Next time I'll bring a deck of five, with five aces. I don't play that game kind of game. Charlie turning to him. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Yeah? Yeah. Ignoramus! 
bend as Willie comes toward him through the wall line of the kitchen. So you're William. Willie's shaking Ben's hand. Ben, I've been waiting for you for so long. What's the answer? How'd you do it? Oh, there's a story in that. Linda enters the fourth stage as of old, carrying the wash basket. Is this Ben? How do you do, my dear? Where have you been all these years? Willie's always wondered why you... Willie pulling Ben away from her impatiently. Where's Dad? Didn't you call him? How did you get started? Well, I don't know much. Well, I don't know how much you remember. Well, I was just a baby, of course. Only three or four years old. Three years and 11 months. What a memory, Ben. I have my enterprises, William. And I've never kept books. I remember I was sitting under the wagon and was it Nebraska? It was South Dakota. I gave you a bunch of wildflowers. I remember you walking away down some open road. Ben laughed. I was going to find father in Alaska. Where is he? At that age, I had a very faulty view of geography, William. I discovered after a few days that I was heading due south. So instead of Alaska, I ended up in Africa. Africa? The Gold Coast. Principally diamond mines. Diamond mines? Yes, my dear. But I have only a few minutes. No, boys, boys. Young, deaf, and happy appearance. Listen to this. This is your Uncle Ben. He's a great man. Tell my boys, Ben. Why, boys, when I was 17, I walked into the jungle. When I was 21, I walked out. He laughs. By God, I was rich. You see what I've been talking about? The greatest things can happen. I have an appointment with the kitchen to can Tuesday week. No, Ben. Please tell me about Dad. I want my boys to hear. I want them to know the kind of stock they spring from. All I remember is a man with a big beard. I was in Mama's lap, sitting around a fire. Some kind of high music. His flute, he played the flute. Sure, the flute, that's right. Now, new music is heard a high, rollicking tune. Father was very great, a very wild-hearted man. We would start in Boston, and he'd toss the whole family into the wagon, and he'd drive the team right across the country, through Ohio, and Indiana, Michigan, Illinois, in all the western states. We stop at the towns, sell the flutes that he made on, on the way. Great inventor, Father. With one gadget, he made more in a week than a man like you could make in a lifetime. That's the way I'm bringing him up, Ben. Rugged, well liked, all around. Yeah? Hit that. Hit that boy. As hard as you can. As hard as you can. He pounds his stomach. Oh. No, sir. Come on. Get to me. Go to it, Biff. Go ahead. Show up. Okay. Cocks his fist and starts in. Linda to Willie. Why must he fight, dear? Ben sparring with Biff. Good boy. Good boy. How's that, Ben? Huh? Give him a left, Biff. Why are you fighting? Good boy. 
suddenly comes in, trips Biff, and stands over him, the point of his umbrella poised over Biff's eye. Look out, Biff! Gee! Ben patting Biff's knee. Never fight fair with a stranger, boy. You'll never get out of the jungle that way. Taking Linda's hand and bowing. It was an honor and a pleasure to meet you, Linda. Linda, withdrawing her hand, coldly frightened. Have a nice trip. Ben to Willie. And good luck with your... What do you do? Selling. Yes. Well, he raises his hand. Farewell, fellow. No. Ben, I, I don't want you to think. He takes Ben's arm to show him. It's Brooklyn. I know. But we hunt, too. Really? Oh, sure. There's snakes and rabbits. And that's why I moved out here. Why... Biff can fell any one of those trees in no time. Boys, go right over to where uh, they're building that apartment house and get some sand. We're going to rebuild the entire front stoop right now. Watch this, Ben. Yes, sir. On the double, eh? I lost weight, Pop. You notice? Charlie enters in knickers even before the boys are gone. Listen, if they steal any more from that building, the watchman will put a Put the cops on. Linda to Willie. Don't let Ben. Ben laughs lustily. You should have seen the lumber they brought home last week. At least a dozen six by tens worth all kinds of money. Listen, the staff watched, man. I gave him hell, you understand? But I, couple, I got a couple of fearless characters there. Willie, the jails are full of fearless characters. Ben clapping Willie on the back with a laugh at Charlie. And the stock exchange, friend. Willie joining in Ben's laughter. Where are the rest of your pants? My wife bought them. Now all you need is a golf club and you can go upstairs and go to sleep. Great athlete. Between him and his son Bernard, they can't hammer a nail. Bernard rushing in. The watchman's chasing Biff. Willie angrily. Shut up! He's not stealing anything. Linda alarm tearing off left. Where is he, Biff? Dear. Willie moving toward the lady left away from Ben. There's nothing wrong. What's the matter with you? Nerve you. Good. Oh, nerves of iron, that Biff. Don't know what it is. My New England man comes back and he's bleeding. They murdered him up there. It's contracts, Charlie. I got important contracts. Charlie sarcastically. Glad to hear it, Willie. Come in later. We'll shoot a little casino. I'll take some of your portland. He laughs at Willie in anger. Willie turning to Ben. Business is bad. It's murderous. But not for me, of course. I'll stop back by on my way back to Africa. Can't you stay a few days? Just what I need, Ben. Because I, I have a fine position here, but I... Well, Dad left when I was such a baby, and I... I never had a chance to talk to him, and I still feel kind of temporary about myself. I'll be late for my train. They are opposite ends of the stage. Ben, my boys, can we talk? They'd go into the jaws of hell for me, see? But I, uh, William, you're being first rate with your boys. Outstanding. Man, they checked. Willie hanging on to his waist. Oh, Ben, that's good to hear, because sometimes I'm afraid, because sometimes I'm afraid that I'm not teaching them the right kind of, Ben, how should I teach them? 
then giving great weight to each word, and with a certain vicious audacity. Well, when I walked into the jungle, I was 17. When I walked out, I was 21. And by God, I was rich. He goes off into the darkness around the right corner of the house. Was rich. It's just the spirit I want to imbue with them. To walk into a jungle. I was right. I was right. I was right. Ben is gone, but Lily is still speaking to him as Linda in the nightgown and robe enters the kitchen, glances around for Willie, and then goes to the door of the house, looks out and sees him, comes down to his left, he looks at her. Really? Dear? Really? I was right. Did you have some cheese? It's very late, darling. Come to bed, huh? Gotta break your neck to see a star in this yard. You coming in? Whatever happened to that diamond watch fob? Remember? Ben came from Africa that time. Didn't he give me a watch fob with a diamond in it? Well, 13 years ago, for Pitt's radio correspondence course. Gee, that was a beautiful thing. I'll take a walk. Bet you're in your slippers. Lily's starting to go around the house at the left. I was right. I was. Half to Linda as he goes, shaking his head. What a man. There was a man worth talking to. I was right. Linda calling out for Willie. But in your slippers, Willie. Willie is almost gone when Biff in his pajamas comes down the stairs and enters the kitchen. What is he doing out there? Shh. God almighty, Mom. How long has he been doing this? Don't. He'll hear you. nothing to do. So go to sleep. Abby comes down the stairs and sits on the step. I never heard him so loud, Mom. Well, come around more often. You'll hear him. She sits at the table and lends to the lining of Willie's jacket. Why didn't you ever write me about this, Mom? How would I write for over three months? He had no address. I was on the move. But you know, I thought of you all the time. You know that, don't you? No? I know, dear, I know. But he likes to have a letter. Just know that there's still a possibility for better things. He's not like this all the time, is he? When he come home, then he's always the worst. When I come home, when you write your coming, he's all smiles. He talks about the future. He's just wonderful. Then the closer you see to come, the more shaky he gets. And then, ugh. I had to 
time you get here, he's sorry. He seems angry at you. I think it's just that maybe he can't bring himself to open up to you. Why are you so hateful to each other? Why is that? I'm not hateful, Mom. But you don't sooner come in the door than you're fighting. I don't know why. I mean, I mean to change. I'm trying. Mom, you understand. Are you home to stay now? I don't know. I want to look around, see what's going on. Yeah, you can't look around your whole life, can you? I just can't take hold, Mom. I can't take hold of some kind of life. Yeah, a man is not a bird. Come and go. It's the springtime. Your hair. He touches her hair. Your hair got so gray. Oh, it's been gray since you were in high school. I just stopped dying, that's all. Dye it again, will ya? I don't want my pal looking old. You're such a boy. You think you can go away for a year and you've got to get it into your head now that one day you'll knock on this door and there'll be a strange people here. What are you talking about? You're not even 60, Mom. But what about your father? Yep. Well, I met him too. He admires Pop. Yeah, he is. You don't have any feelings for him. And you can't have any feelings for me. Sure I can, Mom. No. You can't just come and see me because I love him. With a threat, but only a threat of tears. He's the dearest man in the world to me. I won't have anyone making him feel unwanted and low and blue. You've got to make up your mind now, darling. There's no leeway anymore. Either he's, he's your father and you pay him the, that respect, or else you, you're not to come here. I know he's not easy to get along with. Nobody knows that better than me, but... Willie from the left of the stage with a laugh. Hey, hey, Biffo! Biff starting to go out after Willie. What the hell is the matter with him? Don't! Don't go near him! Stop making excuses for him. He's always... Always wiped the floor with you. Never had an ounce of respect for you. He's always had respect for... What the hell do you know about it? Just don't call him crazy. He's got no character. Charlie wouldn't do this. Not in his own house. Spewing out that vomit from his mind. Charlie never had to cope with what he's got to... What he's got to. People are worse off than Willie Loman. Believe me, I've seen them. And make Charlie your father, Biff. You can't, you can't do that, can you? I don't say he's a great man. Willie Loman never made a lot of money. His name was never in that paper. He's not, he's not the finest character that ever lived, but he's a human being, and a terrible thing is happening to him. So attention must be paid. He's not to be allowed to fall into his grave like an old dog. Attention. Attention must finally be paid to such a person. You called him crazy. I didn't mean. No, a lot of people think he's lost his balance. But you don't have to be very smart to know what his trouble is. The man is exhausted. Sure. A small man can be just as exhausted as a great man. He works for a company 36 years this March opens up unheard territories to their trademark, and now, in his old age, they take his salary away? 
I didn't know that, Mom. You never asked, my dear. Now that you get your spending money someplace else, you don't trouble your mind with it. But I gave you money last Christmas time, $50. The hot water costs ninety-seven fifty. For five weeks, he's been on straight commission with a beginner, an unknown. Those ungrateful bastards. Are they any worse than his sons? We brought them business when he was young. They were glad to see him, but now his old friends, the old buyers that loved him so and always found him some order to hand him. In a pinch, they're all dead, retired. He used to be able to make six, seven calls a day in Boston. Now he takes his... Now it's his... Out of the car and just puts them back and takes them out again and he's exhausted. Instead of walking, he talks now. He drives 700 miles. When he gets there, no one knows him anymore. No one welcomes him. What he goes through a man's mind, driving 700 miles home without having earned a cent. Why should he, why should he talk to himself? Why? When he has to go to Charlie, borrow $50 a week and pretend to me that it's his pay. How long can that go on? How long? See what I'm sitting here waiting for? You tell me he has no character. The man who never worked a day but for your benefit? When does he get the medal for that? Is this his reward? To turn around at age 63 and find his son who he loved better than his life? What a philandering bum? Ah, that's all you are, my baby. It's a bit. And you, what happened to the love you had to for him? You were such pals. How you used to talk to him on the phone every night. How lonely he was till we could come home to you. All right, Mom. I'll live here in my room. I'll get a job. I'll keep away from him, that's all. No, Biff. You can't stay here and fight all the time. He threw me out of this house, remember that? Why did he do that? I never do. Why? Because I know he's fake. He doesn't like anybody around him. Who knows? Why am I fake? In what way? What do you mean? Still laid all of it at my feet. It's between me and him. That's all I have to say. I'll chip in from now on. He'll settle, settle for half of my paycheck. It'll be all right. I'm going to bed. He starts for the stairs. He won't be all right. Biff turning to the stairs curiously. I hate this city. And I'll stay here. Now what do you want? He's dying, Biff. Happy turns quickly to her, shocked. Biff, after a pause. Why is he dying? He's been trying to kill himself. Biff, with great horror. How? I knew it from day to day. What are you talking about? I remember I wrote you when he smashed up the car again. In February? Well? Well? The insurance inspector came. He said that they have evidence. That all these accidents in the last year weren't, weren't accidents. How can they tell you that? It's a lie. Seems there's a woman. She takes a breath. Biff sharply looks at Tim. Linda simultaneously. 
were wounded in this war. What? What? Go ahead. What did you say? No. You said what woman? What about? Well, it seems she was walking down the road and saw his car. She says that he wasn't driving fast at all, that he didn't skip. She says he came to that little bridge and then deliberately, deliberately smashed into the railing. It was only the shallowness of the water that saved him. Oh, no, he, he probably just fell asleep again. I don't think he fell asleep. Why not? Last month? With great difficulty. Oh, boys, it's so hard to say a thing like this. He's just a big, stupid man to you. I tell you, there's, there's more good to him than, than many other people. I was looking for a fuse. The lights blew out. And I went down the cellar. Behind the fuse box? Cap was falling out. was a length of a rubber pipe, just short. No kidding? There's a little attachment at the end of it. I knew right away, and sure enough, the bottom of the water here, there's a new little nipple on the gas pipe. Happy yeah, angered her. That jerk! Did you have it taken off? I... I'm ashamed to. How could I mention it to him? Every day I go down and take away that little rubber pipe with me. When he comes home, I put it back where it was. How could I insult him that way? I don't know what to do. I live from day to day, boys, I tell you. I know every thought in his mind. It sounds so old-fashioned and silly, but I tell you, he puts his whole life into you. Turns your backs on him. Hughes bent over the chair, weeping, her face in her hands. Biff, I swear to God, Biff, his life is in your hands. Uh, uh. Happy to bed. How do you like that, damn fool? Biff kissing her. All right, Kyle. All right, it's all settled now. I've been remiss, and I know that, Mom. But now I'll stay. And I swear to you that I'll apply myself. Kneeling in front of her in a fever of self-reproach. It's just, you see, Mom, I don't fit in business. Not that I won't try. I'll try. I'll make good. Sure you will. The trouble with you in business is you've never tried to please people. I know. I like when you worked for Harrison's. Bob Harrison said you were the tops. Did he go and do some damn fool thing, like whistling whole songs in the elevator like a comedian? Biff against that. So what? I like to whistle sometimes. You don't raise a guy to a responsible job with whistles in the elevator. No, don't argue about it now. Like when you go off and swim in the middle of the day instead of taking the line around? Well, don't you run off. You take off sometimes, don't you? On a nice summer day? Yeah, but I cover myself. Boys. 
So I'm going to take a fade the Boston. So I'm going to take a fade the Boston. Call any number where I'm supposed to be, and they'll swear to him that I just left. I'll tell you something that I hate to say, Dip. But the business world, some of them think you're crazy. Screw the business world. All right, screw it. Great. But cover yourself. I don't care what they think. They've laughed at dad for years, and you know why? Because we don't belong in this nut house of a city. We should be mixing cement on some open plain. Or, or carpenters. Carpenter is a loud whistle. Willie walks in from the entrance of the house at the left. Even your grandfather was a better, better than a carpenter. Pause, they watch him. He never grew up. Bernard does not whistle in the elevator, I assure you. Biff, as though to laugh, Willie out of Biff. Yeah, but you do, Pa. I never in my life whistled in an elevator. And who in business world thinks I'm crazy? I didn't mean it like that, Pa. Don't make a whole thing out of it, will you? Go back to the West. Be a carpenter, a cowboy. Enjoy yourself. Willie, he was just saying. I heard what he said. Hey, Pa, come on now. Willie continues over your happy smile. They laugh at me, huh? Go to Feline's. Go to the Huff. Go to Slatter Slattery's. Boston. Call out the name Willie Loman and see what happens. Big shot. All right, Pa. Big. All right. Why do you always insult me? I didn't say a word. To Linda. Did I say a word? You didn't say anything, Willie. Willie's gone to the doorway of the living room. All right. Good night. Good night. Willie, dear, you just decided... You get tired of hanging around tomorrow? Paint the ceiling I put up in the living room. I'm leaving early tomorrow. He's going to see Bill Oliver, Pop. Oliver? For what? Biff was preserved but trying. Trying. He's always said he'd, he'd stake me. I'd like to go into business, so maybe I could take him up on it. Isn't that wonderful? Don't interrupt. What's wonderful about it? There's 50 men in the city of New York who stake them. Sporting goods? I guess so. I know something about it. And he knows something about it. You know sporting goods better than Spalding, for God's sake. How much is he giving you? I don't know. I didn't even see him yet, but... What are you talking about? Well... All I said was, uh, I'm going to go see him, that's all. Ah, you're counting your chickens again. Oh, Jesus, I'm going to sleep. Oh, curse of this house. Since when did you get so clean? Wait a Don't use that language at me. I won't have it. Happy grabbing dip shouts. Wait a minute, I got an idea. I got a feasible idea. Come here, Biff. Let's talk this over now. Let's talk some sense here. When I was down in Florida last time. I thought it'd be a great idea to sell sporting goods. I just came back, it just came back to me. You and I, Biff, we have a line. A loaning line. We train a couple weeks. We put on a couple exhibitions, see? That's an idea. Wait! We form two basketball teams, see? Two water polo teams. We play each other. It's a million dollars worth of publicity. Two brothers, see? The Loman brothers displays in the Royal Palms, all the hotels, and banners over the rings, and the basketball court. Loman brothers. Baby, we could sell sporting goods. That is a $1 million idea. 
marvelous. I'm in great shape as far as that's concerned. And the beauty is, the beauty of it is, Biff, it wouldn't be like a business. We'd be out playing ball again. Yeah, that's a million dollars. We wouldn't have to get all get fed up with it, Biff. Be the family again. It'd be an old honor. Comradeship. If you wanted to go off for a swim or something, well, you'd do it. Got some smart kooky getting up ahead of you. Lick the world. You guys together could absolutely lick the civilized world. I'll see Oliver tomorrow, Hap. We can work that out. And we can start by getting to. Stop interrupting. Don't wear a sport check. Slacks with see how No? Oh, a business suit. Talk as little as possible. And don't crack any jokes. If you didn't like me, always like me, people love to. Will you stop? Walk in very serious. You're not applying for a boy's job. Money is to pass. Be quiet, fine, and serious. Everybody likes a kidder, but nobody lends them money. I'll try to get some myself, Viv. I'm sure I can. I see great things for you kids. I think your troubles are over. But remember, start big and you'll end big. Ask for 15. How much you gonna ask for? Gee, I, I don't know. Don't say gee. Gee is a boy's word. Man walking in for fifteen thousand dollars does not say G. Ten, I think. If you top though, don't be so modest. You always start it too low. Walk in with a big laugh. Don't look worried. Start off with a couple of your good stories to lighten things up. It's not what you say; it's how you say it. Because personal personality always wins the day. always thought the highest of me. Will you let me talk? Don't yell at her, Pop, will you? I was talking, wasn't I? I don't like you yelling at her all the time. I'm telling you, that's all. What are you talking about? What are you, taking over this house? Really? Don't take his side all the time, goddammit. Stop yelling at her. Willie suddenly pulling on his cheek, beaten down, guilt ridden. Give my best to Bill Oliver. You may remember him. She exits through the living room doorway. Linda, her voice is good. What do you have to start that for? Biff turns away. See how sweet he was as soon as he. Talk, hopefully. She goes over to Biff. Come up and say goodnight. Don't let him go to bed that way. Come on, Biff. Let's buck him up. Please, dear, just say goodnight. It takes so little to make him happy. Come. She goes through the living room doorway, calling upstairs from within the living room. Your pajamas are hanging in the bathroom, Willie. Happy looking towards where Linda went out. What a woman. They broke the mold when they made her. You know that, Biff. He's on salary. I 
God, working on a commission? Let's face it, it's no hot shot selling, man. Except that sometimes you have to admit it's a sweet personality. Let me ten bucks, will you? I want to buy some new tires. Take you to a place I know. Beautiful stuff. Wear one of my striped shirts tomorrow. She got gray. She got gray. I've got awful old. Gee. We're going to Oliver tomorrow. Knocking for her. Come on up. Tell that to Dad. Let's give him a whirl. Come on. You know, for 10,000 bucks, boy. Heavy as they go into the living room. That's a talk, Biff. That's the first time I've heard that old confidence out of you. From within the living room, fading off. You're going to live with me, kid. Any babe you want, just say the word. The last lines are hardly heard. They are mounting the stairs to their parents' bedroom. Linda entering her bedroom and addressing Willie, who is in the bathroom. She is straightening the bed for him. Can you do anything about the shower? It drips. Willie from the bathroom. All of a sudden, everything falls into pieces. Goddamn plumbing. I ought to be sued, those people. I hardly finished putting it in, and the thing... His words rumble off. I'm just wondering if Oliver will remember him. You think he might? Willie coming out of the bathroom in his pajamas. Remember him? What's the matter with you? You crazy? If he'd have stayed with Oliver, he'd be on top by now. Wait till Oliver gets a look at him. You don't know the average caliber anymore. The average young man today? He is getting into bed. He's got a caliber of zero. Greatest thing in the world for him was to bum around. Stiff and happy under the bedroom, slight pause. Willie stops short, looking at Beth. Glad to hear it, boy. Happy. You want to say goodnight to you, sport? Willie to Biff. Yeah? Knock him dead, boy. What do you want to tell him? Just take it easy, Pop. Goodnight. Turns the door. And if anything falls off the desk while you're talking to him, like a package or something, don't you pick it up. They have office boys for that. I'll make a big breakfast. Will you let me finish? Tell them you were in the business in the West, not farm work. All right, Dad. I think everything. Willie going right through her speech. And don't undersell yourself. No less than $15,000. Biff unable to bear him. Okay. Good night, Mom. He starts moving. Because you got a greatness in you, Biff. Remember that. You got all kinds of greatness. He lies back exhausted. Biff walks out. Linda calling after Biff. Sleep well, darling. Happy. I'm going to get married, Mom. I want to tell you. Linda. Go to sleep. I, w I just wanted to tell you. Keep up the good work. God. Remember that Ebbets Field game? The championship up the city? Just rest. Should I sing to you? Yeah. Sing to me. Linda hums a soft lullaby. When that team came out, we was the tallest, remember?
and you see Thorfinn Kitchen takes a cigarette and leaves the house and comes downstage into a golden pool of light and smoke staring at the night. Really? Like a young god, Hercules, something like that. The sun, the sun all around him. Remember how he waved to me? Right up from the field. The representatives of three colleges standing by, and the buyers I brought, and the cheers when he came out. Loman, 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 God Almighty. He'll be great now. A star like that. Magnificent. Star like that, magnificent, never fade away. The light on Lily's table, the gas heater begins to glow through the kitchen wall near the stairs. A blue flame beneath red coil. Lily says, Lily, my dear, what has he got in this? I'm so tired. Don't talk. Dip slowly returns to the kitchen and stops, stares towards the beaver. <clears throat> Will you ask Howard to let you work in New York? First thing, though, everything will be all right. Dip reaches behind the heater and draws out a length of rubber tubing. He's horrified and turns his head towards Lily's room still dimly lit, from which the strength of wind is desperate but monotonous humming ride. Willie staring through the window into the moonlight. Gee, look at the moon moving between those. Gee, look at the moon moving between the buildings. Dip wraps the tubing around his hand and quickly goes upstairs. Curtain. My name is Mitchell Tedifer and I'm a playwright. That was act one of an original work Death of the Sales.